Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at Showcase and looking at the Artvis Pro Photo Studio. And you might ask me what this actually is and what it can do to help you. So it's an accurate reproduction of a professional style photographic studio, and it's got over a hundred different modular assets to be able to configure this scene. And it allows you to put any specific asset in this and get a photorealistic look, whether you need to look at lighting, whether you want to render the asset out, or whether you want to make something for a portfolio. This is fully featured across HDRP and URP for PC, mobile, and VR and it takes advantage of lots of different features in HDRP and with lots of custom shaders with the use of volumetrics, lighting and so many different effects and I've asked the developers today a bunch of different questions to help you out and we'll also go through this project and have a look at how they've done some of their lightings, their setups and the new features that they've used across HDRP. And I wanted to give you guys the lowdown about what they said. So you can use this quite easily along with every single asset within this scene across other games, other projects and anywhere else. You can use this scene to put your own assets in if you want to render them in a photo realistic style, whether that's a character, a car, a prop, whatever that may be. And I asked the developers what gave them the idea of making this scene and what gave them the inspiration to do it. And they actually wanted to be able to have everybody have a chance to showcase their products more easily. A very good approach is to showing lighting, materials and geometry and how to achieve a very high realistic look by you being able to break down, look at how they've done the lighting, the settings and everything within there. And I asked, how do you create all your assets and make them look so detailed? They said they use whatever modeling software is appropriate for them. And similar with you, they said it's not very important. It's more about the 3D artists having the skills to produce high poly and low poly models to be able to bake out the textures. They use Substance Designer to create specific materials that need to be used on their models and then Substance Painter to place those materials on the objects to achieve PBR realistic results. So no matter your lighting situation, it will look realistic in that. And all textures are baked out at 8K resolution and downscaled based on what the asset should need within Unity. Then I asked how many polygons do we feature in this scene? So this scene does feature a couple of million of different polygons with multiple LODs for each. Of course, if you're further away from an object, it would become a lower resolution object the further you are away. And it also includes occlusion culling and basic optimization techniques from there. I also asked if there was any specific lighting or rendering features that they used from HDRP, which was really prevalent in what they wanted to use. And we'll look at some of these today, but they use volumetric lights, decals, planar reflections, the shader graph, light layers, and more. I asked if all the assets were static in this scene and they said yes but it could support dynamic real-time objects with the use of light probes but static objects just help you to do the global illumination and the baking with the light mapping. I asked if they create custom light mapping UVs for each object or they do that inside Unity and they do work with custom light mapping UVs because you get a much better control over the final result if you need to be more accurate or you get bleeding or you need to work out specific kinks in the whole process. It's good to make your own UV light mapping. You can do that directly in Unity by clicking the, the import create light mapping UVs box when you import that into Unity, but there's not as much direct control. And I asked how it is that they achieve such great lighting across this and across multiple of their other scenes that they make. They, they told me that the light map settings are the least most important aspect of great lighting. And it's very much to do with the importance of high quality PBR assets with the textures, which are high resolution and then having the correct amount of lights within the scene. And they suggested that less is often more about the way that you set up your scene. And then I asked if there was any custom shaders that they created specifically for this project. And there was specific shaders with the shader effects graph for the car material, fabrics, velvets, and other materials that you'll see around the scene. 
So here we are in the scene and I was just going to go through some of the actual items and objects that you'll find within this scene. And you can see that this does use a whole bunch of decals and you can project specific decals which are not baked into your texture like pain, damages, patches, anything that you need to do if you want to do a sort of eroded concrete. And you can see that you can project the paint splatter if you see here onto services and if I move the projector away, it will just snap it straight to the actual object that it's looking at. So all you need is this one material to control that, which is a standard as classed as a HDRP decal with the normal PBR workflow. And you can see that this scene uses a bunch of different reflection probes for all the different areas that they have. And it's broken up without one big reflection probe because you don't get as accurate results so it's split up into very specific areas like the outside the garage the back of the garage the car bottom and the back and different areas and they do use the box projection method to make it more realistic in a sort of square room that this is and they have these with real-time reflections rather than being baked in as I said, they do come with a lot of peripheral assets, wires, fixtures, fittings, which add to the realism of the scene. They do have a post-processing stack, which uses the most common types of post-processing. They specifically use vignette to darken the edges of the screen, exposure to control how exposed the scene would be if you didn't have that enabled. The white balance to make the temperature slightly warmer within the scene, Chromatic aberration is an effect on the edges of lenses, or if you wear glasses, you can see, usually see a white or green hue. The tone mapping to neutralize and bring out the contrast within the scene. Bloom to highlight very bright aspects and make them more visible. Color adjustments again to bring out contrast and exposure in the scene. Ambient occlusion to add shadows to recessed areas, which you wouldn't normally see where you can create contact shadowing. Split toning to give a little bit of life to the shadows that you see in the background when I turn this on and off. Lens distortion to create a slight distortion that when you have, if you had a camera lens, you distort the very edges of the screen. And film grain to just add a bit of graininess to the actual overall scene so it isn't as clean. This scene does have a large bunch of light probes to take into account of real-time objects so when you bake out your scene you can use real-time objects and it would take the lighting into account and also when we look at specific lights that are surrounding our objects we have specific spotlights which are from the ceiling which have volumetrics which have shadows volumetrics enabled so you can choose to enable or disable that and you get the volumetric effect which looks like dust in the way of the actual light itself are actually real time lights these are not baked in and these are just used to create the volumetric effect rather than add a lot to the overall lighting itself and then the rest of the lights which are around which are looking onto the actual car itself are point lights which are baked with a with baked shadows with a very low strength and with set emissions and intensities and what also helps out to get like a very skylight over the top of the scene is that this object that emits at the top with the actual lighting that we've got uses an area light which is used mixed lighting and you can bake in a very specific light for a specific shape and also when you select some of the materials around the scene as well you can see that this object also above which has the area light which is some cloth does actually feature on its material an emissive color which has an intensity of five which also adds to the global illumination of the scene to keep it lit nicely and of course like i said it does feature their own specific car double-sided shader to take specific lighting into account to be able to make this work and lastly we'll look at the lighting settings which uses the base global illumination with shadow mask and with the progressive gpu light mapper with direct samples at 256 then 512 resolution for the samples with four for the min and max bounces with advanced filtering with the 100 light map resolution, with a 2000 resolution texture, with baked in ambient occlusion, and indirect contribution 
set to 1. And when you bake this out, it is around 1.42 gigabytes worth of a light map. So I hope this gave you some insight, some in-depth looks to how you can create your own realistic scene. Check out Oniros and ArcVis Pro and all their fantastic packs on the Unity Asset Store because they really do create the best looking visualizations for Unity. Do come and support me on Patreon to get access to over 115 different scripts, projects and so much more. Come and join me on Discord if you want to chat. Check out my great assets on the Unity Store and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.